Happy Sabbath, Ecclesia. My name is Melanie Contreras. I'm a native Californian, but currently residing in Florida. Um, I wanted to share a Bible verse with you today. My, it's one of my favorites, Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and uphold you with my righteous right hand. Um, as some thoughts that came to me this week about this verse, um, as you guys know, there have been a lot of uh, protests and social justice issues that have been coming to light even more and more often. And I was thinking, often it is easier to say that something's wrong. It's so easy to say, oh yes, this is wrong. It's definitely harder to do something about it and to stand up for what is right. Um, we have a lot of things that we can look at and say, well, yeah, I know that's wrong. But when we sit back and are complacent, are we truly doing what Jesus wants us to do? Um, and this verse came to mind because no matter what happens, we do not need to fear because God will have us. God will have our back. So I hope you are blessed this Sabbath. Enjoy the program and enjoy some time with your heavenly father and your earthly family.
Hi, this is Pastor Gabe. For today's message, we have a special guest speaker. At Ecclesia, it's been our desire that as we grow as a church and as a group, a community of believers, we want to invest in our generation of leaders. We want to see young adults and young people given a platform so that they can preach the Word of God, they can exude their talents for His glory, and they can find a home and a community of faith that supports them and takes chances on them. I'm so excited for today's speaker because Jesus Vera comes from La Sierra University. He's a fourth year religious studies major, and he has a passion for the Lord. He's excited about ministry. He serves at a local church as an intern. And speaking with Jesus Vera, I could easily tell that he has a gift to connect with people. And most importantly, he comes from our generation. And the way he speaks his language, it's all coming from a place of wanting genuine relationships. So enough about this introduction. I think you want to get into the word with Jesus Vera, one of our people. Thank you so much. And I can't wait for you to be blessed by his message. And remember, we're here to encourage you so that you can experience confident gospel living. What's up, guys? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I'm not really too sure what time you're watching this, but I just want to say happy Sabbath. As you already know, my name is Jesus Vera, and I'm just really excited to be sharing the word with you guys this morning, afternoon, evening. But Ecclesia, thank you so much for having me. You know, when I was when I was talking to Pastor Gabe about about a week, uh, about two weeks ago, and I was just kind of like mentally preparing myself for for what I'm gonna say today for today's message for today's sermon. We were kind of just talking about the culture um, that Ecclesia has, and and honestly, like when he was like, I'm not even. It's not even to hype you guys up, right? Not even to hype up Ecclesia, but yo, I gotta hype you guys up because. <laughs> The way Pastor Gabe was describing it to me, he was like, yeah, dude, well, you know, we're a community that really dives into scripture. We're really intentional about what we read and, and what it means for our present context, our present time, our present lives. And that was just exciting me so much. And then I heard your guys' like motto, your guys' mission, right? Experience confident gospel living. Yo, when I heard that, like goosebumps, I'm, I'm not playing goosebumps experience confident gospel living that honestly just hyped me so so much that motto of just lets me know that ecclesia really is a community that is intentional about, about how they approach scripture that's intentional about how they serve those around them like i said the, the motto just really just resonates with me and i just want to thank you guys so much for being a community that embodies that that really is pursuing that uh in your guys's lifestyle like I mean, I can say that over and over and over again, and I'll never get tired of it, right? Experience, confident, gospel, living. Man, that was so much fire. I feel like doing like 300 push-ups right now. If you don't think I could do 300 push-ups, put it down in the comments right now. Let me know if you think I could do 300 push-ups because I'm being so serious. That motto is just so exciting. It's so, it, it just fills you with the, with, with, with the spirit. It fills you with 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 the reminder of who we are and who we are to be and that brings me to today's message title which is this is what we are called to right we're called to experience confident gospel living guys i'm sorry i just I, i'm gonna blame it on uh, on you guys as a church because you guys have such a fire motto um i'm gonna say that a lot this this morning or evening or afternoon whatever time you're watching i'm gonna say it a lot this message because i really love those four words experience confident gospel living and i know guys i'm already like I, this may be too much right for you know you're probably watching at home on your screen on your computer or whatever and you're just like whoa what is going on like this is too much energy for me right now i'm sorry guys i'm gonna tone it down just a little bit i i can't promise throughout the message i'm gonna tone it down because again it just really excites me it fires me up i'm ready to go so thank you guys thank you so much for having me this sabbath before we get started why don't we just go ahead and open up with the word of prayer and, and just ask the holy spirit just just, just to calm, calm it down just a little bit now i'm just playing with you guys but for real let's go ahead bow our heads and let's open up with the word of prayer 
Heavenly Father, God, I'm so thankful for my community here at Ecclesia. God, I'm so thankful, God, for that calling that you've given them, right? This calling to experience confident gospel living, God. God, at this moment, I ask that you manifest yourself through me, that you manifest yourself through this screen. God, that you're able to just touch me, open up my mind and my heart, God, for what you have to say through me, God. And I also ask that you open up uh, the hearts and minds of the, of, of, the, of the Ecclesia community watching. I want to thank you for all that you've done up until this point, God. And I thank you in advance for the things that you will do in the future, God. Thank you so much. Be with us now and forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. I feel like I'm already sweating. I'm going to have to just relax just a little bit. But... um today's message super exciting message it's actually a passage that honestly i don't think um a lot a lot of preachers actually preach from it's it, it's kind of like a passage that you kind of just skip over skim over like okay we've read it a bunch of times we get it whatever um our passage for today will be coming from mark chapter 3 verses 13 through 19. if you have your physical bibles um make sure to take them out Put in the comments like hey i got my physical bible or put in my comments like hey i left it at home but that doesn't make sense because you're at home now i'm just playing with y'all but for real our passage will be coming from mark chapter 3 verses 13 through 19 and if we could just go ahead and just open up i think that's the best way for us to start this morning or afternoon or evening or whatever time you're watching <laughs> So once you have Mark chapter 3, verses 13 through 19, just go ahead, go to the comments right now and write, Amen, I got it, I got it, Pastor, I got the passes that you want. Now I'm just playing with you guys. But for real, feel, feel free to interact with the comments. Feel free to ask some questions or, or, or leave your thoughts about today's message or just today's worship experience overall. Um, amen? All right, let's go ahead and read our passage. I'll be reading from the NRSV version, and it goes like this. He went up to the mountain and called to him those whom he wanted. And they came to him, and he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, to be with him, and to be sent out to proclaim the message, and to have authority to cast out demons. So he appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name, I always mess up with this word, to whom he gave the name Bo Bo Boane Boanerges. I I have no idea. If you know how to say it, put it in the comments. You know the drill. Um, that is Sons of Thunder, and Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew. For some reason, that name always just kind of reminds me of Marshmallow. I don't know why. So uh, let's just go ahead and say that right. And Andrew and Philip and Marshmallow, <laughs> and Matthew and Thomas and James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus and Simon the Cananean. And Judas Iscariot who betrayed him so like I said guys honestly this passage isn't something that um, I, I really heard about growing up like of course I read it of course I knew who the 12 disciples were but it wasn't something that you would hear from the pulpit like hey these are the 12 disciples like boom like like what's supposed to what are you supposed to do with the list of 12 names well let, let me let me um, make it more cinematic for you right yes it's it's a boring plain list of 12 names there's a guy named marshmallow in there it doesn't make sense w whatever let's go ahead and make it more cinematic imagine your favorite movie right imagine your favorite film uh uh i'm gonna pick one i'm gonna go with with the genre of superheroes right whatever you like whatever you're into marvel if you're into dc i'm gonna go with marvel um i'm also a dc fan but i'm gonna go with marvel right you guys remember that that avengers film the first one that came out where where they finally bring all the characters together like the main core five or six or whatever how many there are right you got black widow you got hulk you got iron man you got captain america you got thor you got hawkeye um stuff like that right so there's a scene in the first avengers film where you're kind of getting this aerial shot of the avengers kind of like in a circle it's like in downtown new york and they're getting ready for like this massive battle and that scene is so epic like honestly like you're if you're if pre-covid and you were in the uh movie theaters watching that you you would have your popcorn you would have your drink and you would just kind of be like oh snap like this is what i've been waiting for and then you hear captain america say those famous words avengers assemble all right so picture that 
picture that now with this passage, right? Jesus appointing the 12. You're kind of getting this aerial shot of all the disciples. You see Matthew, you see the sons of thunder, right? You see Marshmallow, you see Peter, you see Judas, you see Andrew, you see Thaddeus, you see all 12 of them just lined up kind of like in the circle, the aerial shots coming in. And then right in the middle, you have Jesus, boom, disciples assemble, right? That's kind of what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about what does it mean when Jesus calls us to assemble? What does it mean when he tells us, Ecclesia, assemble, right? You see, because this passage actually calls us to identify what it means to experience confident gospel living by the one who is faithful now and forever. And to fully understand what we want to talk about this morning, afternoon, evening, I don't know what time you're watching, what, but we, what we really want to talk about uh, in today's Sabbath message is, is, is what does it mean to be called by Jesus? What does it mean uh, when Jesus tells us to assemble? And, and to really simplify that, to really make it practical for us to understand, we're going we're gonna to be looking at what I like to call confident gospel living keys or just confident gospel keys, just to make it shorter, confident gospel keys. Make sure to write it down on your notes, whatever you need to do, confident gospel keys, right? What we're basically gonna do is we're gonna go through um, this passage just one more time and just break it down, take out those keys, uh, key by key, and just really look at what Jesus is calling us to, right? So again, the passage begins with, he went up to the mountain and called to him those whom he wanted. The interesting thing about this is that if we look at those whom he wanted throughout the entire gospel, right? Bear with me really quickly. We kind of have to just do a little bit of, 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 of a brief context of the entire gospel of Mark. You see these 12 names, when, when we look at them throughout the entire book, we actually recognize that these called, that Jesus had called to him because those are, those, those are the people that he wanted, they don't prove to be all that special after all. Now, I know what you're saying. What do you mean the disciples weren't special? Of course they were special. Yes, they were special. But to be honest, they weren't that different from you and I. And what I mean by that, that they weren't Jesus is what I'm trying to say. You see, the disciples made a bunch of mistakes. They, 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 they made a bunch of failures throughout this entire gospel, right? Uh, they, they feared the storm. They didn't know how to feed the multitude. They couldn't cast out demons. They denied Jesus. They betrayed Jesus. They left Jesus hanging dead on a cross, hanging dead on a tree, and, and they just all fled, right? Like, what kind of guys, like, if, if you were assembling a team, like, wouldn't you call people that you knew, that you know, would, would remain by your side through it all, that would always be faithful? Yet, Jesus calls a group of guys who are full of imperfections, who are full of mistakes, who are, who are bound to make a bunch of mistakes, right? And so my question is, why, why does the author of Mark do this? Why does he spend so much time talking about the disciples' imperfections? Well, the first thing that I want to talk about is this idea, this concept of called. Called will be our first uh, confident gospel key. I think that the disciples are, I think that the disciples are portrayed in, in kind of this negative light is because it it's allowing us to identify with the disciples. You see, again, the disciples made mistakes over and over and over again, right? And sometimes in our life, sometimes in, we're going to have seasons in our life where we recognize that we're called, where we recognize that we're called to him, but we're still bound to make mistakes. We're still bound to, to have seasons in, in our life where where, hey, things aren't going so hot, things aren't going so well. And sometimes we, we may even, you know, kind of just lose our faith, kind of just stumble across our faith journey with God. And th what, what's interesting about that is that if Jesus still called the disciples, knowing everything that they've done, knowing everything that they would do, and he still called them because he still wanted them, I think that applies to us so much more today, right? I think that Jesus is telling us like, hey, if you want to experience confident gospel living, then you have to recognize that I'm calling you. And I really don't care what you've done in your life. I don't care what you're going to do tomorrow. I don't care what you're going to do in 10 years because I'm still calling you and you're still the person that I want, right? That's the first step in, 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 in experiencing confident gospel living is recognizing that, hey, we're not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. It's recognizing that, hey, we're going to make mistakes, but our God doesn't make mistakes. It's recognizing that, hey, I'm called and nothing can ever take that away from me, right? Because Jesus 
doesn't call qualified people. Jesus qualifies the call. Guys, I'm sweating because I'm like really sweating right now. I want you guys to really get this message across. You see, I think one of the reasons why this passage isn't really talked about is because we tend to focus on the list of 12 names, but we pass over the, the actual focus, the actual highlight of this passage, who is none other than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one who did the calling. In other words, our life, our calling begins and ends with Jesus. Guys, this is something that we really must understand. You see, the thing about making Jesus the focal point of this passage is that we recognize that Jesus is faithful through it all. You see, Jesus called these disciples and even though they made mistakes, even though they, they, they feared the storm, even though they were fighting for, for fame and glory to be on the right, right hand side of Jesus, even though they, they, they sometimes didn't believe in who Jesus was, Jesus still remained faithful through all their imperfections, through all their mistakes. Jesus remained faithful up into the cross and even to the resurrection. What's the first thing that Jesus did after resurrecting? Boom, guys, he went to go see his boys because he was always faithful to them. You see, it doesn't matter how far off we go in life. It doesn't matter what mistakes we make. It doesn't matter. Um, it, it doesn't matter how how we view ourselves. Jesus will always be faithful to us. Jesus will always say, "Hey, I called you. I need you to remember who you are because I called you." It doesn't matter how far we run because Jesus will always be there running right next to us. Like I said, I'm really excited, but I'm gonna blame this on you guys, Ecclesia, because you guys are the one that has this model, right? Experience confident gospel living. And that's the first key that we have to understand is this concept of called. We may not be perfect, we may have mistakes, but Jesus called us and that's it, that's final. There's nothing after that, right? Like period, right? Jesus called us and there's nothing that we can do about that. And honestly, there's nothing that we should want to do about that, right? You see guys, our discipleship, our calling it doesn't rest it doesn't depend on how uh, on our personal lives it actually depends on the life of Jesus that's why I said that our calling begins and ends with Jesus you see if we make Jesus the focal point of this passage then we recognize how faithful Jesus is through it all now I want to ask you guys a question what would happen if you make Jesus the focal point of your life what would happen if you make Jesus the focal point of your experience right then you would recognize how faithful Jesus has been in your life. You may not be where you want to be today, but I promise you, if you just pause and reflect on how faithful Jesus has been, you'll recognize that Jesus has been there through all the hard moments in your life. He's been there through all the struggles in your life. Jesus has always been there and Jesus will never leave. That's really this first key that I really wanna talk about. And it's important that we take this much time talking about it because if we don't recognize that we're called if we don't recognize that jesus that jesus is faithful then we'll never be able to experience confident gospel living and here at ecclesia that's something that you guys are really pushing for that's something that we really want to do as a community we really want to experience that so we have to recognize that hey we are called just go ahead and say it to yourself right say i'm i am called i am called put it down in the comments hey we are a community that's called and when we recognize that, man, there's no going back, man. I'm, I'm just being so transparent right now because it's so important to me that we all understand that first key, the key of being called. I know I kind of just like went like full throttle on you guys in the first key, but don't worry. These next few keys are going to be short, simple, practical, going to get straight to the point. Um, that first key was just super important how that we understand that we're a called community but our second key if we keep reading the passage it says right again he went up to the mountain and called to him those whom he wanted and they came to him and he appointed 12 guys this is our second key appointed Jesus has appointed you Jesus has anointed you Jesus has given you resources to live out that confident gospel living Jesus has given you resources to 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 fully fulfill your calling like jesus showers us with love jesus showers us with mercy jesus showers us with grace jesus showers us with freedom jesus showers us with peace jesus showers us with confidence and that's really something that should excite us right jesus is the one that appoints us and anoints us into our new lives and our new lives need to be centered and focused on jesus christ
Scripture tells us that he appointed the 12 and this morning, this evening, this afternoon, I don't know what time you guys are watching, but I want to remind you that Jesus has appointed you. Jesus called you and Jesus appointed you. Appointed is our second confident gospel key. We have to recognize that we have been appointed. We have been set apart. We are a community that stands with Jesus, the one who is faithful now and forever. If you're feeling this message, go ahead and go to the comments right now and just jot down a quick amen as we head over to our third confident gospel key. If we keep reading, it says, And he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, to be with him and to be sent out to proclaim the message. Guys, our third gospel key is being sent out and it just hit me as i was reading this he it says he appointed 12 whom he also named apostles yo sometimes when jesus appoints you your character your identity your name will change right that's just a little side note it just hit me right now during the middle of this message right we we, we see simon being changed to peter and 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 that's the same thing that can happen to us. Our identity and our name and our life will change when we recognize that we're called and are appointed. But our third confident gospel living key is being sent out. Guys, the disciples were given a special task. They recognized they were called. They recognized they were appointed. And now they've been given a special task to proclaim the message, to proclaim the good news, to proclaim the kingdom of God. That's the same task that we are given to as a community today. Ecclesia, we've been given a task. We've been given a task to, 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 to proclaim the message, to proclaim the good news, to proclaim the kingdom of God. But the thing about that is that we can't just talk about it. We can't just, just, just come here, uh, just come here on YouTube every single Sabbath, right, and, and, and get fired up. We, 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 can't, we can't simply do that because the thing about uh, proclaiming the message of God, the thing about proclaiming the kingdom of God is that, guys, we actually have to get physical with the kingdom of God. We have to get our hands dirty with the kingdom of God. We have to do the hard stuff. It's really easy to say, hey, I love my neighbors and hey, I love my enemy, but it's a lot harder to actually do that. It's really easy to talk about service and prayer and worship and loving without boundaries, right? It's really easy to say, it, but it's a lot harder to actually do it. And that's what the message of God is, right? God doesn't say, well, uh, well said, right? God doesn't say, uh, well, think, well, well, well thought through, right? God says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Guys, we have to take action as a community. And, and that's really what it means to experience confident gospel living, right? We recognize that, hey, we're called. We recognize that, hey, we're appointed. But now we've been given a task. And it's up to us individually and communally whether or not we're going to pick up our cross and do the hard stuff. Whether or not we're going to get our hands dirty with the kingdom of God. Proclaiming the message of God, proclaiming the good news is more than just talking about it. We have to take action as a community and as a church and individually. But let's go ahead and find out what our fourth confident gospel key is. If we keep reading, it says, right, and to be sent out to proclaim the message. We have to remember, Jesus is the one who's doing all this. And that leads us to our fourth confident key, which says, and to have authority. Ecclesia, it's super important that we recognize that Jesus is the one who has bestowed this authority upon us. Jesus has given us this authority. You see, Jesus wants us to experience confident gospel living. And because he wants us to experience it, he will give us that authority to live courageously, to live boldly, to live full of faith, to live, to live a life full of hope. And the thing about this authority, it's not just Jesus the man giving it to you. It's Jesus the God giving it to you, right? This is a divine authority. And it's a divine calling, it's a divine appointing, it's a divine sending out. And therefore, it's also a divine authority to live your life freely, to live your life in service, to live your life in communion, to live your life confidently. Brothers and sisters, we have this authority given to us by the one who is faithful now and forever. Man, we've already covered four different gospel keys that allow us to experience confident gospel living, right? But now we're going to get to our fifth and last one. And I think this is this is probably one of the most important ones. It's And it's also 
low-key one of the hardest ones to understand and to really grasp and to take action right and it says um and to be sent out to proclaim the message and to have authority to cast out demons yo that's the last task that jesus gave us it's the task that he gave the disciples he said hey i'm gonna give i'm gonna call you i'm gonna appoint you you need to send you need to go proclaim the message and and here here's some authority go ahead here's here's this grace here's this mercy here's this love here's this freedom here's this confidence but now i need you guys to go cast out demons and my question to you guys today is what does that look like for us today you see we've been called to be set free Jesus gives us this authority to cast out the demons in our personal lives. Jesus calls, uh, Jesus calls us to cast out our personal struggles, to truly be confident and truly be rooted in Him. This is what it means to experience confident gospel living. And the thing about casting out demons is that not you not only have the authority and the power to cast out your own, but you have the authority and the power to cast out the demons in the in, in the people you love the most, to cast out the demons in, in your communities, to cast out the demons in your nation, right? And this is the point that I really want to focus on today, Ecclesia. Ecclesia, we are called to be a church that cast out uh that, that cast out all demons of injustice, right? You see, guys, there's one demon that we all have in common, and it's all across the globe. It's everywhere. You can, it's everywhere. It's in our schools. It's in all the countries. It's in our homes. It's in our churches. It's in our businesses, right? And, and, and this demon knows how to hide itself. This demon knows how, how to kill people. This demon knows how, how to trick people into thinking it's okay. You see, this demon is called systematic and internalized racism. And Ecclesia, we have been called to be a church that, that, that recognizes they're called, that recognizes they're appointed, that recognizes they have to preach the, the kingdom of God, that recognizes that they have authority, and that recognizes that we must stand up in the face of injustice, in the face of oppression, in the face of racism, and say, not here, not today, not ever. Ecclesia, this is what we are called to. We are not called to live in fear. We are called to live in freedom and we are called to live confidently. We are called to experience confident gospel living. We are called and made qualified through Jesus Christ. We are called to recognize God's faithfulness. We are called, we are appointed, we are to be sent out to proclaim the message. We have authority bestowed upon us. We are called to cast out all the demons all around us. We are whom He wants now and forever. This is the good news. This is what Jesus wants. We are, Ecclesia, we are living, breathing proof, living, breathing truth. Ecclesia, that was my message for you guys today, this morning, this evening, this afternoon. Again, no idea what time you're watching. And like I said, I'm literally sweating, but that's because of you guys, because you guys embody confident gospel living. We are a church that recognizes we are called. We are a church that recognizes we are appointed. We are a church that recognizes that we have a task. We are a church that recognizes we have authority. And we are a church that recognizes that we have to cast out demons. If you have any questions about any of this, feel free to reach out to Pastor Gabe. Feel free to reach out to those in your community. Go ahead, leave questions in the comments. But for real, I'm super grateful that you guys allowed me to just, to just share my heart, to just share what Jesus has to say through Mark chapter 3, uh, through the appointing of the disciples. Now I bet you guys won't think it's such a boring list of names after all, right? This is our calling, Ecclesia. I'm super grateful and I'm thankful again. Happy Sabbath. I hope you guys have a happy rest of the week. And just to close off, let's go ahead and finish with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we, we are so excited. We are so fired up, God, because we have recognized that, hey, you have called us to experience confident gospel living, God. And I ask, God, that you allow us to take these keys, that you allow us to just reminisce on them, to put them in our hearts, to put them in our minds, God, and to share it with all those around us, God. God, I ask, God, that you give us that boldness, that confidence, that authority, God, that love, that freedom, God, that grace, that mercy, God, that righteousness, God. Thank you so much for all that. 
and, and thank you so much for all that you do now and forever. I pray for all those I pray for all those that are watching right now and I ask God that you really encourage us that you really encourage us God to stand up for what is right. Thank you so much God for this community for for Ecclesia God. Thank you so much for their calling. And, and, and I, ask, I ask God that you pour a blessing over, over their pastor, that you pour a blessing over their congregation, and that you pour a blessing over their future, God. Thank you so much, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ecclesia, once again, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Pastor Gay, for having me. And um, yeah, deuces. I'm out. I love y'all. And happy Sabbath. You were the one I love again. One with God, the Lord most high. Oh, yeah, sing it out. You're hitting glory.
We hope that you guys were able to receive an enormous blessing from the message I was just given. Now, I would like to invite you guys to have a word of prayer with me. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us another Sabbath to be able to enjoy and receive a blessing from your word. I ask that you be with every individual that is watching and the families that are represented as well. I ask that you bless us as we finish off this week and that you continue to bless us as we enter a new week, whether it be filled with work, school, or any of the other things that we have going on in our lives. I also ask that you be with every individual that is represented in the Church of Ecclesia and with their leaders as well. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. Now, if you'd like to be a part of more prayer, I have this announcement to make to you guys. Every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. on Zoom, there's going to be these new prayer meetings that are going to be conducted. We ask you guys to stay updated and follow up on all of our social media platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more details regarding this. Well, we hope you guys have a happy Sabbath and continue to live confidently through gospel living. Bye. Hey guys, this is Melissa. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you were blessed. And for more of our content, you can follow us on social media at Ecclesia Paris, and you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you have a blessed week, and we also hope to see you again next week.